Hey guys, so um, I am not going to be teaching um, a live lesson today. Sorry, the screen's going to be kind of weird. I was on the right spot. Um, so I just need you guys to watch this pre-recorded video and copy the notes into your notebooks. And you will still have homework tonight. Um, it will be on Delta Math. Just a reminder, you guys still have to complete your 3-1-3-3 quiz by Monday, that's um, November 9th, by 11.59 p.m. That includes both attempts if you don't like your first score. And today, you have homework that is due by midnight. That's the 3.2 slash 3.3 homework that's on Schoology. If you haven't completed that, please remember to get it done by midnight. Otherwise, you don't get full credit. So just open up to your notebooks. For a new page, we're just going to skip the warm-up. Um, please title it Lesson 3.4, um, Solve Multi-Step Inequalities. That's what it's called. It's supposed to say Solving Multi-Step Inequalities, not Solve. The Iowa Bot, you don't have to write down. That's just telling us what we're pretty much doing, which is solving the multi-step inequalities and graphing them. Now, there's a little bit of writing. Um, so let me just, I'm just going to scroll past just the title. At any point in time, just pause the video to, to work through the problems and check your work. So now it might be beneficial just to pause the video and copy this all down. Okay, so I'm just going to read it. Um, so generally, solving multi-step inequalities is just like solving a one-step inequality. Um, when we just want to try to think of them like we're solving equations, like back in chapter one, back from your last year's math class, because our goal is still to get the variable by itself on one side of the inequality symbol. Um, two main differences um, is that you know our solution is not just one number. There's an infinite number of solutions, and what that means is that that arrow, when you graph it, it points to all the numbers, either smaller than or greater than the number you came up with in your inequality. Well, numbers go on forever, so the arrow goes on forever, so you have an infinite number of solutions. Um, and then just remember, when you multiply or divide by a negative coefficient, that's a number glued to your variable. Um, you have to turn your inequality sign around. You have to flip it. In today's lesson, you're going to see where we get a solution, um, when we don't get a solution, and when there's infinite solutions. So, if we have a no solution, this is when we tried to solve our inequality and we reach a ridiculous statement that's never true. Um, and so when that happens, we just write our answer to be no solution, and because there's no solution, you wouldn't have any graphs. Um, we can also have an infinite solution. Um, so this is when we solve an inequality and we reach something that is always true. And so when <laughs> you reach something that's absolutely always positively true, it's called an infinite solution. And we don't graph infinite solutions anyway. Um, if we were, it would literally just be a straight line with arrows on both ends with no dots. So it would be a number line. So that's not worth our time to draw. All we're doing today is just solving and graphing. Here's example one. Copy down this problem. It is y over negative 6 plus 7 is less than 9. I like, I'm just going to, for right now, draw a little bit of a fairness bar from our inequality symbol. Just like I would with solving equations, the first thing I would do is get rid of the constant. Um, the constant is plus 7, so I would undo it with minus 7 on both sides. This would now leave me with y over negative 6. And then on the right, 9 minus 7 is 2. Now right here, to get my y by itself, I have to undo the division, can fractions or division. And when I do that, I'm multiplying by a negative number. It's a negative 6. And so when I do that on both sides, what happens is this inequality symbol flips around. And instead of being less than, it becomes greater than. So I am automatically fixing that so I don't forget it later on. So now I have y greater than... And then 2 times negative 6. A positive times a negative is a negative. 2 times 6 is 12. So I did get, you know, some kind of an answer. I have y values greater than negative 12. I graph that. I like to put negative 12 in the middle. I'm just going to put a couple numbers to the right and to the left of it. So I know kind of where does my number fall. In this case, this will have an open dot above 12 because it's a strict inequality. 
and y greater than negative 12. So this is pointing to all the numbers bigger than that. That means to the right of it. So two-part answer as in uh, you have a graph and the inequality statement. Okay. Um, I recommend at this point you just pause the video, try B, and then unpause to check your work. All right, let's see how you did. So you should have subtracted 11 first off. Then you would have had n greater than, or no, I'm sorry, n over negative 2 is greater than 1. Getting your variable by itself, you had to multiply by a negative number, which means this inequality symbol turned around. So now it's a less than. So you have n less than a positive times a negative is a negative. 1 times 2 is 2. So you should have gotten that inequality statement n less than negative 2. When you graph it, just put some numbers around where negative 2 would be. This will also be an open dot, and this time it's going to point to the left because it's less than. All right, let's see some that get a little more complicated. This is example 2a. Make sure you copy this one down. <clears throat> We have 8x minus 3 greater than 4 times in parentheses 2x plus 3. Um, first thing I'm going to do is simplify, kind of clean up the right-hand side of my inequality by using the distributive property, and I multiply 4 in. So now I have 8x minus 3 greater than 8x plus 12. Now, since I like variables on both sides, section 1.3, um, I am going to move my variables. So they both are 8x, so it doesn't really matter which one you move. I'm just going to move the 8x that's on the right over to the left by subtraction. So when I subtract 8x on the right and on the left, what happens is I have 8x minus 8x, and that turns to 0. They, it, they just canceled out. And so now I'm left with negative 3 greater than 12. Well, it's comparing a negative number to a positive number. And never is it true that a negative number is more than a positive number. So this is never true. This is a ridiculous statement. Um, so this actually is a no solution. Because I, I canceled out all my variables. I have nothing else to do but compare these two numbers, and this will never be a true statement. It's ridiculous. So I just stop here and I say no solution. No graph, because there is nothing to graph. I want you guys to try B. Please pause and attempt it. All right, let's see how you did. You should have started off by cleaning up the right, the left-hand side by multiplying in the negative 4. That's a distributive property. And you should have gotten negative 12n plus 4, because two negatives make a positive, greater than negative 12n plus 5.2. Um, I, again, I'm probably going to move this negative 12 from the right to the left. Um, I do that just because I like to move variables to the left more often. It doesn't really matter, though. So I'm going to do that by adding 12 in. And you're left with 4 greater than 5.2. Well, it's a whole number 4 compared to 5 and some change. And that is a ridiculous statement. 4 is smaller than 5 in any way. So this is actually a no solution as well. Okay, so we're almost done. Make sure, you know, if I'm going too fast, just pause when you need to. Um, you can send me a message on Schoology or my D11 email if you want to set up any extra help on Monday when um, I should be back. So... Example three, um, I'm still doing this one, so this is part A, copy it down. I want you to start by, we got to clean up this left side, by using the distributive property and multiplying the two inside. This gives me 10x minus 6, less than, didn't do anything to write, so I have 10x plus 7. Kind of the same idea as before, I'm going to move my variables to one side, and so I'm going to do that. Um, by subtracting a 10x, you could have started to move the, the the constants first, and no matter what, you'd still get the right answer. So I just personally tend to move variables first. 
And what happens is it cancels out my variables, actually on both sides, because I have 10x minus 10x. So now I'm left with negative 6 less than 7. Um, I know my inequalities and my 7s tend to look very similar. Sorry. Um, but we have a negative number smaller than a positive number, and, and that's always true. Negative 6 will always be smaller than a positive 7. And so because this is always true, this is an example of an infinite solution. Because it's always true. You can't, you can't argue otherwise. And infinite solutions we don't graph because it would literally just be a number line. So you don't need to worry about graphing anything. You just need to decide infinite solution. If you don't feel like writing the word infinite, the symbol is like a sideways 8. If you'd like to write the symbol instead. Mm -mm. All right, almost done. And then you guys should be able to do your homework. And my guess is you'll finish it before, you know, official class time is probably over. So part B is yours. Make sure you just pause the video and try it out. Okay, let's see how you did. You should have multiplied in the 2 on the left using the distributed property. And got 2k minus 10 less than 2k plus 5. Um, again, it doesn't really matter how you did it if you wanted to work with your variables first and then deal with the numbers. I like to move my variables, so I'm going to subtract 2k on both sides. In the end, it does not matter which variable moves because they all cancel out. And so now you're left with negative 10 less than 5. A negative number smaller than a positive number is always true. And so this is another example of an infinite solution. Okay, hey, um, well that's it, so for your lesson, um, you have homework, it is 3.4 on Delta Math, you need 10 questions in a row, correct? Um, if you don't, you know, you'll just keep doing questions, remember that if you're turning in your homework assignment late, you do not get full credit, I take off points, please make sure this assignment gets done on time, which is due on Monday, November 9th at 11.59. Um, send me a message if you need help on any of your work. Please don't forget to complete your quiz. Also do Monday, and your 3233 homework is due tonight by midnight.